uh, Charlie Moreno Romero. Uh, Charlie is a teacher and uh, alternative education expert with 15 year experience in public and private international schools and universities. And currently he's working as a head of studies at, sorry if I mispronounce, Suvemaya. I hope I'm right, uh, public school in Estonia. So Charlie, welcome and the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Hello people, it's a pleasure. Thank you, I'm very honored. Thank you, Shan. It's really interesting to hear, always to hear about um, Sun School. It, it has been definitely an inspiration to many. Uh, my name is Charlie, as um, I'm Colombian, as, as I was introduced. Thank you, Ingrida. Um, I'm Colombian with many years in Estonia. Mm, always coming from a family related to education, very interested, uh, especially I did my, my uh, PhD in democratic education and education for social justice. And this has been there like for a long, long time. How to promote inclusion, how to uh, promote representation, redistribution and participation within uh, educational institutions or learning environments, basically. So at the moment I am, yes, I, I, we started two years ago, um, a pilot project, the name is Subemae. Eh? <laughs> it actually, the name is not uh, a, a coincidence. It means uh, summer hill in Estonian, it's Subemae. And, uh, and uh, why? Well, because summer hill sands, uh, different schools around the world have been an inspiration to, to this project, but we, have done is to create a democratic branch within a public school. We want it to be um, uh, a pilot of what could happen as, as Derry Hannam uh, mentions, like pioneers of possibilities. We would like to share uh, the, the possibility that, that is there, that we can do it. I'm gonna share um, a screen. Now I think that you are seen. Um, are you seen? Yes. Okay, this is uh, SUBMI 2.0, it's our second year. And these are our kids, kids from uh, various backgrounds, from uh, uh, linguistic backgrounds. That is one of the challenges we have. We have around 20% of our kids come from a Russian speaking community. In many cases, they don't speak any Estonian language. Um, around 25% of, of, of the kids in the school um, come with diagnosis of ADHD and well, hyperactivity, uh, autism. We have a couple of kids with Asperger's or, uh, and, and uh, the, the challenges associated to them. Um, and then how did it happen? How did we get here? Here is a joke, an education expert, an edutech startup leader and a desperate mother and a school director are at a bar. Actually, we were not at a bar. We were, uh, somehow we got together uh, after my studies in Spain, I came back to Estonia, started meeting people, organizing uh, conversations in pubs, in, in uh, restaurants, just to speak about the possibilities of democratic education and try to find partners to start building on something. Um, so finally, at some moment, we got together four people with, with, with a goal, which was to create an alternative environment for kids to be able who recover themselves, as Sean was pointing it out, from, from the stress of, of uh, conventional education, uh, and also to explore their potential to, to grow and develop in an inclusive, friendly, relaxed environment. And then we, we spoke with this um, school director. She um, agreed on, on you know, betting on this, on this idea. She had already some experience in bringing innovation within the main um, uh, school life, interest-based lessons, uh, mostly uh, open to different uh, age groups. So what we did was just to start building on, on the idea of a democratic branch within a public school. This is one of the biggest schools in, in Estonia. Um, it has been going on for over a hundred years. Um, and then we organized a series of seminars on online and offline. Um, explaining what democratic education was, is, and what we wanted to uh, do with, with, within this, this public school. If you check the webpage of EUDAC, 
you would find two different characteristics for democratic education. Uh, one is self-directed learning. Um, the other one has to do with democratic participation, inclusion of kids in uh, decision making. Uh, in my view, there are uh, at least uh, two more um, characteristics. One of those is age mixing, uh, where we don't separate kids according to their age, but rather most of the day they are spending the time together. And the other one is free play as a tremendously important um, uh, a tool for learning and the means through which kids learn how to love learning. Um, so we were explaining about this. We were uh, uploading this video to YouTube. Uh, we had uh, meetings with the local authorities who, who were tremendously skeptical. Um, basically, they said something like, you, you will see what, what you do, you know, just don't mess up. We had, um, after uh, two months, three months, no, two months of, you know, these seminars and this uh, YouTube uh, uh, sharing of videos and so on, we had 100 families who were interested. Um, then during the month of June 2019, we had around 100 uh, in-depth interviews, meetings with the families. In these meetings, we were not uh, looking for... Um, let's say academic excellence in the kids that were, that were coming, but rather it was a possibility for us to uh, answer the questions that the family had and um, at the same time express again, what were our goals uh, regarding Subramai. My role was particularly to destroy any kind of academic um, uh, learning expectation that parents could have, not because it wouldn't happen, but because that was not at the center of what we were, of what we are trying to do. It is important, but our goal is to elevate uh, social skills, communication, empathy with uh, um, emotional well being of the kids at the same level of academic learning. For us, it is these three branches which uh, relate very much with the, um, the, the 21st century skills that Sean was sharing, uh, what need to be taken into account in a very serious way. Um, and then we were gathering, uh, you know, collecting, having interviews with people who wanted to become members of staff. In many cases, we found romanticized ideas of let the kids be free and uh, you know, th there, there shouldn't be any rules and so on. In the end, we managed to get a really interesting uh, team, very um, multicultural. We have a, a teacher from Nepal. We had a Russian speaking uh, Estonian who lived. 15 years in India. We have um, a school graduate with no university studies, but tremendously warm and positive and, and the, the emotional connection that Sean was speaking about in there. Um, we have a very, let's say, conservatively uh, educated person who is open to, 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 learn, to, to uh, exploring different learning opportunities. And, and then we built this team and we started in 2000 and 19. The first year was 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 an, a, an experiment. We had a very little structure. We were still unaware of the requirements by the state. Little by little, we started to get uh, a clear understanding. During the first six months, we had six in six uh, surprise meetings, non meetings visits by the local inspection. Um, we got pretty well out of those, but we got a clear understanding that if we wanted uh, this democratic branch within the public school to work, we needed to make some um, compromises. Uh, and then uh, we, we, we built on those compromises. The first thing that was truly, truly important was the SUVMI uh, circle, the school circle, and the, the participation of students in, in that circle. So we made it open. We uh, initially started with four rules agreements that were meant to provide a safe environment for every kid. Those were stop uh, rule. Somebody is annoying you or bothering you, you need to say stop and they need to stop. The other one was uh, my name. Nobody can call you names unless you want to. Uh, my body, nobody can push you, hit you, hold you, etc. My things, um, my feelings, how do I express my, my feelings when I need to look for, for support in order to express them if I cannot express them in a peaceful way, but you are entitled to have your feelings. This is really important. And now we are trying to uh, strengthen the idea of our earth, our planet, 
and how we can um, become more aware of our, our um, uh, footprint on the on the planet. Um, so we started with this. Uh, let me see here. The emotional connection is tremendously important, um, as, as Sean was pointing out as well. Uh, we wanted to do this. We spoke with the kids. Um, we shared their concerns. We, we were listening to them. They were tremendously um, open to this. When we understood that we had to go get to some compromises, then we divided, let's say, the possibilities into two different groups. The main subjects that we had to teach, of course, in, in creative ways, in friendly ways, looking always for different uh, learning possibilities. Um, those were mathematics, Estonian language, and the natural sciences. So um, you will see it later on. For uh, these three subjects, we have two hours every day of semi-structured learning. And then we have the other subjects, which are history, the human sciences, arts. So we, we have uh, classes, uh, clubs, sorry. Um, and the kids can develop their projects related to those subjects in those clubs and in those workshops, which are voluntary. Um, we also understood that they had tremendously serious needs uh, of, of developing learning skills. So we built this year, I'm talking about September, we built a master class. Basically, this has to do with how to find information, how to, to, to set your own questions when you want to do a research, when you want to learn something. Well, of course, you can take your own book and start reading and you know, talk to other people. That is a valuable way to, to, to get in-depth into your own interests. But at the same time, when we are speaking about um, more academic oriented, academically oriented uh, learning, how to make a summary of, of a text, how to uh, contrast or compare information from different sources, how to organize information and, and explain it in your own words. Uh, we, we see again that, that, that what they had learned in conventional schools well, were, was pretty limited to memorizing and repeating something, but there was very little analysis. <laughs> So we needed to, to, to build on this. Uh, and we started building on this through this uh, master, cl master class. Uh, each child has a coach, a mentor. The child chooses the mentor. And there is this strong emo emotional connection. Is somebody speaking. <laughs> okay, I already shut them up. <laughs> uh, there is this uh, need to, to not to build hierarchies, as strong, but rather the mentor is the person who um, can support the child, not only on academic issues, but also on how to propose a, a club, how to, um, for instance, file a report whenever one of these agreements is breached and the person feels that uh, his or her rights are uh, disrespected, how to um, organize, um, set a, a file a, a report. We have, besides the Subama circle, we have the mediation circle, which is very similar to the judicial committee in the Sudbury Valley School. Five um, uh, young people, one adult. And basically our, our goal is to promote not punitive justice, not to punish anyone, but rather to promote restorative justice. How to fix the relationship, how to mend the damage that has been done and how we get into new agreements that would allow everybody to enjoy uh, the, the, a relaxed learning environment. Uh, the coaching then happens uh, on a, a weekly basis. And again, it's about support at any level, but also about uh, finding different learning possibilities for each one of the kids. As, as um, um, uh, Sam was saying, uh, the, this, this load that they come with is, is pretty heavy from conventional schoolings. Our goal in the end is to, be, to get to a balance, a 50-50, 50-60, as, as uh, some, uh, I think it was Finnish um, sportsman was saying, 50-60, in between academic learning and the kids' own interests. For us, it's really important that the child starts um, own, owning their own, uh, owing their own, um, their own time thinking of, okay, what is it that I'm interested in? What do I want to learn? How, from whom, and so on. 
Uh, we, are, we participate in, in several projects at the moment. One of those has to do with uh, information technology for girls. Uh, only for girls, this is a worldwide initiative because there is data that uh, points out that whenever there is a programming uh, or computer skills uh, 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 workshop, uh, boys tend to monopolize the, the use of this. So our goal was to promote also for girls this possibility. Boys also have robotics and girls can also join. But this unicorn squad is focused specifically on how to support girls build these uh, scientific skills, uh, experimental skills. We have we also participate in youth gatherings, um, which have the, the, the which goal is uh, whose goal is to uh, promote inter um, linguistic and cultural uh, communication between Russian, Estonian, and in this case Moldovan Romanian uh, youth. And we have different topics, which but but they are based on on the idea that uh, you know we build them together the topics on how we will uh, reach the, the goals and so on. What are the goals? This is also shared with them. Uh, we participated last year in the online democratic school. Some of our kids participated. I remember I, I also offer a workshop on anthropology. It was really interesting to see how kids could connect so nicely in different parts of the world. At the moment, one of our, our kids uh, is participating in brainstorming also and some meetings with the Canadian youth on how to reform the educational system. We have our own shop, kids are selling their stuff and so on. Well, at the moment we are in distance learning, but usually when we are in the school, we have this. And uh, we have a, this NGO, which uh, basically is, is um, through which we canalize parental donations, 30 euro per child per semester. With that money, what we do is to buy art materials, we buy musical instruments, we buy more books, dictionaries, perhaps if there is the need to um, uh, use um, uh, or to install uh, a computer program so that they could um, either program or, or design the web pages or video editing and so on. So we pay for that. What, were the, what have been the challenges for us? What we see as the challenges is on the one hand, the issue of unlearning, which I believe is, is not only the kids to unlearn from their habits, but also um, adults, definitely. Uh, the issue of empower, disempowering ourselves, adults, how to release power so that uh, the kids will take this power and, and start together coll collectively uh, building on, on, on uh, their own social uh, uh, decisions. We also have the challenge of having this 20% Russian speaking kids because they don't speak any Estonian. Um, I, I, I have been trying to find any example of how uh, you know, this happens in, in non-conventional schools. Uh, for us, it's really important that they can integrate because otherwise they are not really fully understanding what we are deciding in, in the school meeting. Uh, they cannot participate in some lessons, even though we try to promote, uh, uh, also to provide translations, but it doesn't help when, when uh, they are just waiting for the translation to happen. So at the moment it's much more uh, structured in a way. There is a negotiation all the time, especially with kids who have specific uh, needs like, like them uh, on how this happens. So we need to provide the, 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 the possibility they have also, our kids have to take exams uh, on the third, sixth, and ninth class. I don't know how, what the situation is in Lithuania. These are state exams. And the exams, if they have been already for two years in school, they would be in Estonian. The only possibility is that somebody is next to them explaining uh, uh, what the task is, but the, there, is, there are no uh, exams in, in Russian for them. Another challenge which is really huge is the school hangover. We call it like this. It's all this set of uh, attitudes and ideas that uh, kids come with. Um, low self-esteem in many cases, uh, total uh, apathy towards learning. Um, sometimes uh, they come like uh, they have been bullied or they have been bullying others and, and this is a challenge is, which is really important, really useful at the same time to start building on this school culture on how we need to find our place in the school, how we 
um, need to also enjoy all the rights and privileges and, and, and freedom that we have, but at the same time, how we assume responsibility for our uh, actions and also for our academic duties. Without those compromises in regards to academic learning, we cannot exist at all. And this is pretty clear. Many kids are taking this. Still, it is painful for some of them, but we are finding different opportunities, different possibilities for them to, to deal with this. And in the end, is this this challenge also of finding a balance uh, between the individual development of the person, but also how to build this uh, collective mindset. How, no, yes, how uh, it is possible for kids to start collaborating and learning with others. We also ask parents to support us um, to at least once a year to uh, deliver a workshop or organize an activity with the kids. For us, it's really important, and this is after communication point, to bring the community, society to Suvemai, you know, for, for uh, the elderly to come to, to the school and speak about, you know, their childhood or, or you know, their, their um, vocation, so how they could share. We have some people doing this, and it's really valuable, really beautiful how kids start uh, learning from each other, but also from um, people outside of the school. Another challenge has been communication with families. There are many families that still have academic expectations. Um, so we need to find different ways of uh, how to um, share with them what is happening in, in the school. Of course, uh, when, when the kid is having fun, going to some lessons, learning, but having fun because kids are really enjoying inside of the lessons as well. Um, they go home and parents are asking, uh, what did you do today? And they would say, absolutely nothing, I had fun. So for us, it's really important to, uh, tell, uh, to, to let the parents also know how we are going, what are the challenges, how we see this collaboration with them. Um, we have kids who, you know, before coming to Subamai were rejecting coming to school. Now we have kids who are uh, asking on Saturdays, why is the school closed on Saturday? I want to go there, I want to play, I want to continue with that project, uh, you know, building stuff in the, in the carpentry. Mm, and definitely uh, COVID has been a, a big challenge lately and, and, and at the moment, because a big part of what we are um, depends on being together of, of uh, you know, spending, the sp uh, spending time together, sharing the space together, cleaning the space as well, um, using the materials, discussing the conflicts, finding solutions for the conflicts. So we are, we are kind of limited, although we can do at this moment, we have not only lessons online, but we have some spaces in which I could just come and we just talk. Today I had a talk with the third and fourth class uh, and we were basically using all the, um, the backgrounds and the filters from Zoom and making jokes and we were speaking about what we had for breakfast and, and, and what was what would be the first thing that we would do when we come back to school, if we come back to school hopefully in May. So we try to also use different ways to continue building on this, on this emotional connection with the kids, which is so important. This is a, a timetable, don't, don't get uh, scared. The, this area here from 10 to 12 uh, is the moment for this uh, structural learning. The other ones are voluntary lessons. Uh, even if here is mathematics, they would have, uh, in the end of the day, they have a documentary film, they can choose whether they want to go or not. This was uh, a yellow, um, yellow plan uh, timetable. So it meant that uh, some classes we're staying at home some days. On this day, it was the seven and to nine, fifth to six on Tuesday. Uh, on Wednesdays, we were doing uh, coaching and uh, independent learning activities, but of course, their own time. Thursdays, uh, the third and fourth, and Fridays, the first and second class were at home. And uh, here we have our school meetings. Every day of the week, we have here, 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 and here, we have our school, uh, our uh, bikering, the small circle meeting. It, it is divided. We have the lessons divided in a way that we have the first and second class together, the kids who are within that age range together doing these lessons. 
The rest of the day, they are together with other kids. And it's beautiful to see these connections. Third and fourth together, fifth, six together, seven, eight, nine together. Um, and uh, that is the space when they can suggest, propose different activities, uh, excursions on uh, Wednesdays. The first and uh, fourth class have something called Sega Suma Subila, which is taken from uh, Pippi, uh, long stockings. Um, and this is about the projects that come from them. So some kids said, okay, let's go to the Open Air Museum together. So we can organize it, think about it, find out the information. One of the kids would find information where it happens, how it happens, how much it costs. And then we all go together as an excursion, come back, uh, design different kind of activities based on, on our experience. Everything is voluntary, important to say. Um, yeah, and well, some thoughts, fear, you know, we need to speak a lot with parents because, and also with kids, some, of, some kids are anxious about learning and, um, and they're afraid of, you know, controlling their own, uh, their own learning uh, path. We are waiting for somebody to give to validate all the time what they are doing. Um, so we need to also take fear as part of, of our lives, of our learning. Um, how we build this this relationship with the families is really important. We make it clear that this is not a, a school only for kids, but we are in this also to to support families, uh, especially developing this emotional connection with their own kids. How to speak to a kid. Uh, without being patronizing, without being dictatorial. It is not an easy, an easy uh, process, but we consider that it's, it's important to get engaged with this. We uh, also have at this moment, we um, have the support of a therapist, a family therapist, and she is uh, meeting us uh, with parents in order to uh, help them de you know, deal with their issues in order to support their kids also better. Um, it's a long process. We understand that we are on the, on the second year and we understand that the school culture and the consolidation will take at least two more years, but we are on the right path. We believe this needs to be um, an alternative for different schools. That is what we want to do. We want uh, to start uh, supporting schools, public schools or private schools in Estonia or in the Baltics, um, support, uh, develop these kind of branches. Um, what uh, we have been, um, let's say, fortunate with uh, is the support of, of the school leader. Um, and uh, yeah, we are growing at the moment. In the first year, we had 65 kids. At this year, we, we started with 75 kids. We already have 10 more um, applications for next year. And uh, yeah, it's really fun. It's really interesting. It's not easy. Nobody said it was going to be easy. Uh, sometimes, you know, this it's so emotionally so challenging that sometimes wake up, all of us, you know, staff members, wake up in the middle of the night at three at night and start thinking, okay, how can I help this kid? You know, is it, it, maybe, you know, completely avoiding any contact with others or um, doesn't come to school. We have one kid, for instance, who has social anxiety. He's not coming to school at all. We are keeping communication with the mother, one of our coaches with the, with the kid. And it's challenging, but it's beautiful. My own child is there in, in Subamai, and I'm very happy. I see how she's flourishing. She was in a conventional school. It wasn't a good experience. Um, and now uh, we can see that, you know, it is developing. We, we have a clear idea of how to support kids with different learning uh, needs, uh, but also how to deal with all these state regulations, which are very monolithic and, and, and challenging. And at this moment, I will shut up, please, if you have any question, let me. Thank you, Charlie. It is a very impressive journey. I mean, so am I is a public school, not private. That's really yeah. impressive. So we have some questions from the audience. And the first one is about uh, kids and relationship with the parents. And let's say if there are no democracy in, in a family, I mean, like upbringing. So is it possible uh, then to have democracy in a school, how it's connected? If the family is yeah. not involved, I mean. 
we, we have had this challenge. We cannot speak about democracy at, in the school and then have a dictatorship at home. So we try to we try to speak with families. We try to support them. In many cases, they are just repeating the patterns, you know, uh, from from their childhood. In many cases, the, the the abuse happens between siblings. So I can give you an, an example of something that uh, has happened with us. Um, seven class kid, around uh, 13 years old, uh, bullying, literally bullying um, his brother, who is uh, seven, was seven at the time. Then we brought them to a, to a meeting also with the with the mother. We invited them and and then we asked them, you know how do you feel <laughs> how do you feel how do you feel so the, there is a, the idea of sociocracy that everybody can express themselves and then uh, we share with them the possibility that they could have also this kind of format we gave them some tools uh, on how to explain how they were feeling how to try to get to arrangements we are very glad to see that at the moment this younger kid who was really really like close up he was like really shy now he's blossoming the brother has understood, has empathized. Uh, they have got to agreements. Um, so yeah, in some cases, the parents just just escape, you know, uh, and they don't want to they don't want to really change anything. Unfortunately, we have had a couple of families who have been like this, who just prefer to leave before facing their own their own de demons. Uh, we have limitations. We want to help everybody, but if they don't want to. It's impossible, but definitely we want to, to provide the possibilities for the families to feel supported, that they are not alone in this. And, and again, to, to move, move the lamp only from uh, academic learning and move it also to emotional well-being of the kids and the families, which is really important. Some are really, really um, receptive. Some, uh, they, they don't care, they just move to another place. That is what, you know, our limitation. Yes, thank you. Well, the family is really important. Uh, we have uh, one more question about the class mentors. Do you have such things in Sudamaya and the classes as well? So how is this? So we have, we have the different uh, challenges. On the one hand, uh, the, the learning, the specific learning needs that some kids might have, but also the linguistic aspect of it. So for instance, we have kids in the seventh class who speak only Russian. Now our mathematics, biology, physics, and chemistry teacher is from Nepal. He speaks English. He's learning Estonian. He doesn't speak Russian. So we need a um, 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 support teacher for them. Uh, we give lessons as such in mathematics, Estonian, and the, the natural sciences. The other, uh, um, you know, as the older they get, the more uh, uh, subjects they have to deal with, but from their own perspective. So what we do is, for instance, we have history, we have uh, human sciences. These are two projects for the fifth class. I am the teacher of both. So what, what we do is basically we watch documentaries and we speak, you know, is there any topic you would like to speak that deals with you know, life and so on? But at the same time, we check the curriculum and we see, okay, you see in history for the fifth class, there are, uh, the idea is, um, how is it? Life conditions is one of the topics. And the other topic is uh, research methods in history. So we have some, some uh, kind of structure activities online in OPIC, which is this platform created by the Estonians where they have practical activities. Uh, but then we, throw the ball to them. We say, okay, now you, you understand how this history research methods work. You understand what is supposed to be life conditions in a certain, in whatever uh, time period. What do you want to do your research about? Is there anything that you are interested in uh, that could be related to history? So it's so cool to see how kids who said, I hate history, start framing their, their interests. So one of them, for instance, is going to a circus training. So she decided, I will do a research about circus. I will do a research about circus. Nowadays, the history of circus, the Roman circus, uh, ethical uh, issues in circus. So she is already covering like so many topics in there. Um, our goal is to, through this master class, help them develop those, those learnings. 
skills. So we, we're trying to, to equip them with the tools rather than tell them what is the content that they could use those tools in order to get in depth into any topic. Then they have to present and for some kids in the sixth class, they had never presented. So we help them also, we see it in the coaching, uh, we rehearse the presentations, we give them feedback, uh, we ask questions, you know, uncomfortable questions. Uh, a girl yesterday, we sat for one hour and she she's preparing her presentation on the Chinese wall. She chose the topic totally. Then I asked her the first time, what are your questions? She was like, what? What do you want me to do? Ask your questions. And then she found out some questions. When was it built? Who said to build it? Why to build it? Um, and then um, at some point, I she was talking about the, the wall uh, and that the wall was built with uh, soil and, uh, and sand. And I said, how do they stick together? She was like, I don't know. Okay, but do they use uh, cow shit? What do they use to, to keep it together? I will find out. So just that attitude that I will find out. I don't expect anyone to tell me, but I will try to find the information. It's a very step forward, right? She needed to rehearse it because she had never done it before. And after rehearsing it, she felt much more comfortable. So our goal is also to, to help them build this, this uh, idea of I can do things which is, you know, in conventional schools, many cases, the focus is on what you can't do. Um, but we want also to help them develop on what they could do, but, but you know, the, their own capabilities as, as, as learners in general. So um, the masterclass is basically about the tools. The other subjects are also based on content, right? Especially Estonian, also skills, but skills and content, mathematics, uh, and the natural sciences. Natural sciences, I think, is also like, like a branch there. It opens up and later on. You can use the methods for different subjects. But there is a lot of time for them to do art, music, sports, play chess, uh, draw, you know, create comics. And they appreciate that very much. They, we also have the first name rule. So they don't call me Mr. Charlie or Mr. Moreno. I'm Charlie. There are kids who come and say in Estonian is teacher. And I'm like, where, where is the teacher? Who is a teacher? I, don't, I didn't do anything. Uh, because we want them to talk to us as, as human, not as some kind of power hierarchy there. So we call them by the first name. We want them to call us by the first name. And uh, yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's, it's a very interesting relationship. It's hard, it's painful for them and the families also, but it is moving. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, we have another question from the audience. So Thomas, come along with your question. Charlie, thanks a lot for your story. And you, you mentioned that uh, uh, parents have to do some workshops in the school. Is it obligatory? And if it is so, so how, how do you uh, reach this? How do you talk them into doing this? And it, is it, hard? it is not obligatory. It is uh, uh, an ideal. Uh, we want them to, we want society, we want community to share what, what uh, they, um, all the experiences that they have built on, all the, all the skills they have. We ask for that, but it is not obligatory. They can choose. Uh, some parents have done really interesting things like talking about money or, or how to make a, a budget. Um, some parents uh, come and share, you know, their artistic, uh, there was an accountant who came to share uh, how uh, he was doing uh, aquarelle and, um, uh, you know, to, to share some techniques with the kids. No, it is not obligatory. We would like it to be more serious from their side, thinking that um, the school, uh, that, that they can also bring something to the school, to the kids, not necessarily to their, their own kids different age groups um, but no it is not easy it is it is still a challenge so we still have uh, there was a question yeah on the chat yeah. Mm -hmm. to make Thank sure you. okay so we are yeah mm -hmm. age mixing happens only in the clubs do the structured lessons happen in similar age yes the structured lessons happen according to the state curriculum first second class third fourth adapted obviously when we see also that some kids um they're getting bored because they already, they are capable, for instance, in the third class, 
then uh, we asked them, would you like to try the fourth class? Would you like us to give you a test, for instance, so that you can show that you can do all this stuff? This is, uh, these are documents that we need to, to support and show. And then when the kid feels, uh, yeah, I would like to, then we, we, have, we make all the process and they can finish uh, uh, one school year in half a year and they can move on to the other one. The idea is not to let them get bored with something they know, but they can move forward. Um, so in these lessons, mathematics, Estonian, uh, natural sciences, they happen in the same age group. But then when they have the clubs like this um, unicorn squad or the arts club, or uh, for instance, the newspaper, or um, there was another one that was, uh, well, the music is always, is always age mixed, but in general, they are, they are mixed. Um, that, is, that is the interesting part of, of age mixing is that uh, it doesn't only promote uh, scientific or academic learning, but also lots of you know, social skills, empathy care about the smaller ones. And we see this process developing. Kids who were totally apathetic to smaller kids, uh, suddenly they find themselves wrestling, you know, softly, obviously, because we are there for safety. We say, okay, but control your strength, you know, like <laughs> be careful kids, don't, don't get too angry at him, you know, when, when it's a big boy who is not letting them uh, wrestle around too much. Um, and we see this 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 value. It's it's beautiful to see how they. Uh, it's it's at different levels, you know. It's for instance uh, this this boy who has Asperger's. He came to school uh, last year. He sat on a chair. He didn't move at all. He didn't talk to anyone. He waited the whole time. Then he left. Uh, at some point, he starts getting interested in what the others are doing in the computer. So they are playing with Scratch. And, and then he goes there and starts checking. As soon as the others notice that he's there, he runs away and goes. Little by little, he starts bringing a chair next to the computer. He sits there. He gives his opinion. Um, then he becomes part of, you know, he becomes the one who is doing the, the thing on scratch. Then a smaller kid, uh, first class comes and starts asking, what are you doing? And then the guy is answering, you know, for Asperger's is, is so difficult to communicate. And this kid starts already communicating. There have been conflicts, of course. Um, but we consider that kids are capable at every level, not only academic level, the academic learning, but also at a social, uh, you know, behavioral level. Uh, so whenever there have been these conflicts, we have serious talks with them. So, um, we, we want them to understand that with the rights to decide what they are doing, also come the responsibilities on how we behave with others. This is very important, this, this balance. So we see that the age mixing opens up, opens up different kind of, of uh, possibilities for skill development at different levels, social level, emotional level, academic learning level. So uh, it's, it's really nice. Um, I feel that is one of the things that we need to abolish first is the, other, uh, the, the age segregation according to, to what year they were manufactured, as, as uh, Ken Robinson used to say. Um, it's, a, it's a very important part of, of democratic education, I feel, that they have this possibility, at least longer parts of the days. Great. <laughs> How does learning, uh, how is learning organized in those mixed age groups? Do they have specific tasks that they, okay, yeah. Um, so for instance, if it is about, um, there are different subjects or different areas of knowledge and they have different kind of conditions. So for arts, uh, we have this, this coach who is, uh, she connects really nicely with the kids. So she says, Okay, today I would like to share with you how to use these materials. Would you like to try? If they say yes, then she moves on. If they say no, thank you, I will do my own stuff, then they are doing their own stuff. In some cases, kids are just checking what the other is doing and try it by, the, by themselves. So it can be semi-structure or totally loose on their own. I have a subject, for instance, which is called philosophy or the art of asking questions and finding answers. And the interesting thing is that all the troublemakers who came from schools with so many titles here, you know, this is an antisocial, this is a rah, 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 
they are the ones who are there. Those who hate academic learning, they are in the philosophy lesson because we are thinking together. So we have kids from the fifth class until the ninth class, all mixed together. We do this in English. Um, and I'm, it's very, so I'm very sorry, Charlie. We have only one minute left. So if it's, if it's okay. Take just... your minute. I don't want your minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really interesting to see that when they have the possibility to speak out, mm -hmm. to reflect together in an environment which is respectful to them, which is not forcing them and telling them this, 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 and this, and shut up, uh, kids start opening up and, and participating and making the school their own. I feel that that is the most important thing. We are not perfect. We are still developing, but uh, I feel we are on the right track. I feel that there should be some, let's say, requirements, which have to do also with academic knowledge, but there should be a lot of space for kids to start exploring and, and really finding out what is it that I'm passionate about, which is the left. Thank you very much for the question. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you guys would like to uh, ever come to Supermai, then write and we can organize. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. It has been a real pleasure. Thumbs Thank up. You,